Investing in gold doesn't have to be complicated. I'm Colin Plume, the CEO of Noble Gold Investments, and I want to take the time to show you how investing in a gold IRA can help you hedge your bets against inflation and other economic concerns on the horizon. Visit Noble Gold Investments and get our free gold investment guide on buying gold the right way. And make sure you're investing with the right company. Visit noblegoldinvestments.com. Good evening. I'm still reporting on the coup. Wow. Fox has cut Jesse Waters loose in order to make up for Tucker being booted off the air. Jesse Waters tonight, in eight minutes, put together facts snatched from three decades of the best deep state reportage to explain how the CIA manipulates the American media successfully about 70 percent of the time and how with 100 percent surety they manipulated the letter from 51 so-called intelligence agency officials one week before the 2020 election to thrust hapless Joe into office. I can't improve on it, so here is that segment uncut. Ronald Reagan famously said the nine most terrifying words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. It was true then and it's truer today, but we forgot this truth. And we did the thing he warned us not to do. We let the media be helped by the government. This analysis that we made of the CIA's media operations disclosed, among other things, that they deliver through uh, CIA couriers um, ready to print or ready to broadcast news. How often does the CIA manipulate the media in this way, plant stories, get their views in the media? It goes beyond your wildest imagination, the extent to which the CIA has gone to manipulate public opinion with the objective essentially of manipulating the mind and attitudes of workers throughout the nation and the world. If you think journalists should be smarter than that, well, here's a story. I also was an interrogator and indeed briefed the press when we, the CIA, wanted to um, circulate disinformation on a particular issue. We would pick out a journalist, I would go do the briefing and um, hope that he would put the information in print. What was your percentage of success? Usually, the journalists would go with it because it, was, it looked like some kind of exclusive. And um, I would say our percentage uh, planning that kind of data was uh, 70 to 80 percent. America uncovered all of this about 40 years ago, but we've forgotten it. From WMDs to Russia collusion to COVID to the laptop, the population's been manipulated through the media. It takes us years to figure it out, but by then we're being bamboozled with another lie. Just look at the last election. The FBI and the CIA censored the media, the New York Post, and then lied to the media that the laptop was Russia disinformation so they could install a corrupt stooge in the White House. And the stooge played right along. There are 50 former national intelligence folks who said that what this he's accusing me of is a Russian plant. They have said that this is, has all the care. Four, five former heads of the CIA, both parties, say what he's saying is a bunch of garbage. <laughs> so how did 50 spooks put their John Hancock on a letter within 48 hours? Well, the former CIA director, Mike Morrell, said Anthony Blinken had him do it. The 14th, the Post does a story. The 17th, Tony Blinken, senior advisor to the Biden campaign, current secretary of state, contacts Mike Morrell, gets him interested in this. Mike Morrell looks at it the next day, organizes on the 18th all these other people to sign the letter. The 19th, the letter goes out. And what happens on the 22nd? Joe Biden brings it up. And, it, and then after that debate, here's the kicker. Steve Reschetti, chair of the Biden campaign, calls up Mike Morrell and thanks him for doing it all. It was a total political operation. So Tony Blinken got the CIA to run a cover-up operation to win Joe Biden the election. Again, let that sink in. The CIA, 51 spooks, put Joe Biden in at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. And they didn't do it honorably. They deceived voters to win an election. That's what the CIA is supposed to do in other countries, not our country. And the CIA director, Morrell, admitted in writing the letter because 
Blinken told him to. When asked why he did it, Morell said, quote, because I wanted Biden to win the election. Now, remember, they didn't do this cover-up letter because it was true. They did the cover-up letter to win, and the payoff was huge. Blinken became Secretary of State, and the spies, who'd been planning lies about Trump since 2016, made him a one-termer. But now all Blinkity Blink can do is deny it. I want to ask about the letter that was written concerning Hunter Biden's laptop mm. uh, that said it was you know, Russian disinformation. Mm. Uh, can you explain what your role was in that and if you incentivized it? Well, first, one of the great benefits of this job is that I uh, don't do politics and uh, don't, uh, don't engage in it. But with regard to, uh, to that letter, um, I didn't, uh, it wasn't my idea, didn't ask for it, didn't solicit it. Do you accept that the, the laptop is not Russian disinformation? Again, from my perspective, uh, I'm not, not engaging in politics. Slick Tony knew the laptop was real because he knew what Hunter was doing the whole time in Ukraine. Hunter and Blinkity Blank were boys. They were emailing, setting up meetings, grabbing coffee. We have the emails. They're all over the laptop. Blinkity Blank even told Hunter that his assistant thought he was, quote, pleasant on the eyes after he stopped by one day. But when Blinken was asked under oath if he ever corresponded with Hunter, Blinkity Blink said, who's Hunter? He lied to us. We asked him point blank, did you communicate with Hunter Biden via text or email? And he said no. Well, now we have emails between Hunter Biden and Anthony Blinken, plus his wife. Her name is Evan Ryan. Didn't make that connection. She also worked in the State Department. She was basically acting as a conduit using her personal email between Hunter Biden and Anthony Blinken. Now, everyone's been lying about everything. Blinken lied, CIA lied, Hunter lied, Joe lied, the media lied, and half the country still believes the lies. Now, the media, who fact check Trump's crowd size claims, they just print CIA lies to win Democrats the White House. And they don't even blinkety blink. The very thing we were warned was happening 40 years ago. Even some journalists who don't realize, there are some who are witting, but there are also some who do not realize that they're being uh, targeted by the CIA uh, when they come home from a trip overseas. They might talk to somebody and they don't realize, uh, at least right away, uh, who they're talking to, and then it turns out that they've uh, um, been the source of information which was used by the CIA. These dumb little journalists, fresh out of college, meet a guy at the bar who feeds them an exclusive. They run it, they get clicks. It's just an intelligence op. The only reason we uncovered this in the first place was because we had a church committee, remember? Senator Frank Church exposed everything the government was up to in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s. CIA mind control, assassination plots, domestic propaganda, illegal wiretaps. It all came out, and then we forgot it. We forgot the government was capable of doing such things when they're not being watched. So we'll leave you with this from Senator Frank Church. If a dictator ever took charge in this country, the technological capacity that the intelligence community has given the government could enable it to impose total tyranny. And there would be no way to fight back. I don't want to see this country ever go across the bridge and we must see to it that this agency and all agencies that possess this technology operate within the law and under proper supervision so that we never cross over that abyss. There, that's the abyss from which there is no return. I'm still reporting from just outside the Citadel of World Freedom. Good day.